Jaden Ivey, and Cade Cunningham. This is J.B. Bickerstaff talking about Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland with Cleveland. He said, we always tried to keep one of those guys on the floor. Start and close games together. You always have one of those dynamic players on the floor. Music to my ears, bro. This was absolute music to my ears. Do you remember just the other day, I think on Tuesday when we last streamed, everybody was saying, and it still might happen, but everybody was saying Tim Hardaway Jr. and Lee Beasley gonna start. And I was saying that I think that the move is to start Cade and Jaden together and slide Jaden to point guard when Cade sits down. Remember we talked about that? Yep, yep. Like, it seems like that's what's happening. It seems like that's what JB is thinking. I think that three guard lineup is the move, bro. And you have either Beasley or Hardaway getting those other shooting guard minutes. I just think that allows Jaden to play off the ball. That's exactly what he mentioned in his presser. And let him attack when Cade goes to the bench. And then have Beasley and Hardaway Jr. into the game at that point as the shooting guard. To me, that's the only way you can really get Jaden close to 30 minutes per game, get him reps consistently, and he has to kind of make up for lost time because of last season. So I want him to get as many reps as possible. So if you have him as a backup point guard only, he's getting what, 16, 18 minutes? That's not enough reps to progress at the rate we're trying to get him to move to. So I'd rather cut down on Beasley and Hardaway Jr.'s minutes than I would, you know, cutting down Jaden's minutes, especially if they continue to push that super high ceiling that I think they can get to as a starting backcourt. So Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland, they didn't become an all-star backcourt until Bigger Step got there. And I hope that's what he's looking to do. I, I get the fit part with, with Cade and either Beasley or Tim Hardaway Jr., but it's not like Jade Navi is just a terrible shooter either. Right. If he's open, he's gonna knock it down. I think once again, the spacing on around with Tobias and things like that, it's just gonna make it more evident. But I think you sacrifice a little bit of shooting, perhaps, to allow Jaden Ivey to get those minutes to see all you can get out of this starting backcourt. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's just a, a way to have constant pressure applied on team's defenses. You need to have that constant pressure applied to those defenses. You don't need to drop off when the bench come in. You don't need this all bench lineup. Right. Especially when J.B. Bickerstaff is known for not having huge rotations. He's usually seven, eight, or nine deep. So yeah. like you said, it's not going to be 10 deep every night. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you, you you constantly apply pressure that way. There's no breaks. You know what I'm saying? Because what we were doing last season was absolute nonsense. <laughs> it's absolutely 100%. nonsense. It just makes me happy that it's coming from a coach who's done it. You know what I mean? It's not like it's, it sounds great in theory, but okay, has this worked for you? Like he literally came from a situation where it worked great for him. And that may have been the draw on both sides. Another Jaden quote from um, JB, he said, I think there's a natural speed and athleticism that is hard to deal with in this league. And he said he's looking forward to seeing Ivy catch the ball on the move and play and to play with that tempo. So once again, this is why I think you have to start them together. You bring Jaden off the bench. If you were to do that, like when K says down, who's going to put Jaden in situations to be able to attack off the catch? Right. If you, you know, like who's going to be that guy? Sasser? He's not at that point. So in order for you to have that, you need to have a playmaker on the floor who can get him the ball in that situation. And Kate is the guy to do that. But if he's sitting down, who's doing it? So he would have to start along him in order to do that. It's just, for me, there's no other way around that happening in that way based on what they're saying. You have to be able to use Ivy's speed and athleticism, period. Yeah. It's not only with the Monty Williams uh, staff, but also some of Dwayne Casey, I always felt like why don't we run more? We should be out running, especially with all these young players on this team. We didn't do that consistently, and it drove me crazy. So, right, uh, like I said, that's that's your advantage, man. You got a Sar Thompson on this team too. Yeah. You also, I mean, you just drafted, you know, Ron Holland. Get out and run. You know yep. what I'm saying? And at the same time, allow Ivy to be great, man, and, and attack that basket and use his his gifts. Right. Because it's very very hard to stay in front of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. This is from Lance, one of our guys. What's going on, Lance? Um, he said, you guys think we could see a different guard start depending on the matchup? Um, I I don't think so. I think they're going to try to, what I think they should try to keep it as consistent as possible because I really just want to get Cade and Jaden as many reps as possible. We say a lot. Out of 164 possible games that they've been here, they play 68 of those together. 30%. Yeah. So unless somebody's in foul trouble or something like that, then I think you go into your, you know, deeper into your bench and maybe you start, you know, I still wouldn't start anybody different, but foul trouble, I'm looking at THJ and possibly Beasley if my guys are in foul trouble. But as far as starting, 
I'm right with these two guys. I'm really trying to see what they give me in different situations. I want to see what works. I want to see what doesn't. Ivy working on this jumper. You still have Ivy working on, you know, becoming a more complete point guard. It just gives you more options, I think, if you just allow them to get more and more reps and kind of get a feel for each other. Yeah, I, I think also uh, it'll be a better understanding on offense with the two guards that we have in Caden Ivy on you know who should be doing what because i seen a lot of confusion out there on the court when them two was out there together trying to mm -hmm. figure out be you know what I'm saying i think there's going to be more of a, a greater uh explanation of role explained to these guys like this is what we're looking for in the offense this right. is when we go to ivy this is when we attack this when this it's going to be based off you know match up matchups i believe mm -hmm. so and that's just evident because of what you've seen with garland and mitchell so yeah i think we will have a better situation I, i'm not mad at this cersei a lot of guys need to work on their defense not just ji but he does too but I, once again that's, that's why we got jb here i totally agree with you as far as the defense as a whole guys gotta stay out of foul trouble they need to start reaching place more disciplined defense but i think jb because he also said he has a coaching staff that he brought that's full of teachers so we, yeah. we got fred benson that's great but we have a staff according to jb that is that wants to teach Everybody wants to teach, so that's the development piece of it. I'm, I'm gonna let you um, spend, spend for a minute, Deuce. I got pizza at the door. Oh, do your thing, do your thing. Save me a slice. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get to some of these questions real quick. Let's see. So Luke King and Deuce, do you guys think that the Suns fall in the West? The Pacers can move to D book. I mean, D book is D book, right? Like as much as I can, I really want to see what I can get out of Jaden Ivy and Kay Cunningham. I'm now I'm saying that to exhaustion. To me, it's just like. Even if you think it's not going to work, don't you want to give yourself enough of a sample size with a properly constructed team to see? You know what I'm saying? I don't want another Chris Milton situation to where we're just letting guys go too soon without actually seeing what they look like on the right kind of team. You know what I'm saying? If he's available and we can do it, you know, okay. So if you're if you're okay with that, I, I will make a move like that with D-Book once I'm sure that it's not going to work with Jaden and Kate. And I'm not at that point at all. Can we get Tyus Jones as a back? I'm not mad at that. Once again, for the same reasons I just outlined as far as with D-Book, I don't want to do anything that's going to stunt the growth of that backcourt, man. This is going to be year three for them in total, whether you factoring in injuries. It's going to be year three for them. I don't want another season of us saying, what do we have with them? Well, we still don't know what we have yet. I don't want, no. This is the year to find out what we have in full, even if we overdo it. We need to know if we're going to make any type of moves like that. And so I think having Ivy as a backup point guard, as a starting shooting guard, allowing him to catch off the ball, right? Like Vicar Staff was talking about, that obviously is something he wants to do. That can only happen if he's that shooting guard. We only have one point guard, which is Kate, right? So he has to be in the lineup with him. That obviously is what they want to do. So in my mind, that means Ivy is starting. And we know that Ivy has taken a lot of time the past two seasons to learn how to really play point guard, right? Let him learn gradually. Let him watch Cade. Let him learn from Cade when he's on the court off ball. And then let him incorporate those things when he is as the point guard on ball. You know what I mean? Like let him let him see it from a different perspective as a shooting guard and then go to point guard and let him execute it. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at. I'm really just about the growth of these young guys, especially this backcourt. And I want to see how they look. Like I said it before. I want to see how Jaden looks with spacing too. He had Corey Joseph out there. He had Killing Hayes. He had guys that couldn't shoot the ball out there with him. A lot of time right so as a point guard learning a position you haven't learned and you don't have the right team to do it you have no idea what he's capable of when he has what he needs so that's that's my thing let's just see i can i'll feel so much better about making a trade even if it involves him knowing that we saw what it looks like first as opposed to just saying oh we're impatient we got this deal right here we think that's gonna work for sure it's a big name but no that's no that's that's not we're not even at that point of progression to have that sense of urgency to have to do that yet so i know patience is is boring <laughs> i know just going through it is boring but like we always say in order to build something long term you got to do it slow take time you got to know for sure so that's my take on that what kind of piece do we get <laughs> i got some dominoes man <laughs> um yeah for sure send me a little slice of that for sure i'm gonna come yeah. grab it later TV and Y2K. You don't wanna see, but that Y2K. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his.
this time he's got a plan, yeah Better buy none other than his brother Cannon If this is more than a game, it's a passion Why they see we working? Cause I'm a action Jane and I'll be on the way and get that put a rock Electric fire through the air, a Detroit shot And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him That boy is born 